in five years, we improved the computer graphics by 1,000 times. I have a lot to tell you, very little time, so let's get going. Ray tracing, simulating the characteristics of light and materials is the ultimate accelerated computing challenge. Six years ago, we demonstrated for the very first time rendering this scene in less than a few hours. Let's take a look at the difference in just five years. Roll it. This is running on CUDA GPUs six years ago, rendering this beautiful image that would have otherwise taken a couple of hours on a CPU. So this was a giant breakthrough already. Enormous speed up running on accelerated computing. And then we invented the RTX GPU. Run it, please. Today we're announcing NVIDIA ACE, Avatar Cloud Engine, that is designed for animating to bringing a digital avatar to life. It has several characteristics, several capabilities, speech recognition, text-to-speech, natural language understanding, basically a large language model, and using the sound that you will be generating with your voice, animate the face. And using the sound and the expression that you're saying, animate your gestures. All of this is completely trained by AI. It is completely rendered with ray tracing. This is the new computer industry. Software is no longer programmed just by computer engineers. Software is programmed by computer engineers working with AI supercomputers. These AI supercomputers are a new type of factory. It is very logical that a car industry has factories. They build things that you can see, cars. It is very logical that computer industry has computer factories. You build things that you can see, computers. In the future, every single major company will also have AI factories and you will build and produce your company's intelligence. Alex Krzyzewski and um, Suskiver and Ilya Suskiver and Jeff Hinton, um, they discovered the continuous scaling of artificial intelligence and deep learning, deep learning networks and came up with the ChatGPT breakthrough. And the breakthrough, of course, is very, very, very clear, and I'm sure that everybody here has already tried ChatGPT. But the important thing is this. We now have a software capability to learn the structure of almost any information. Anything that has structure, we can learn that language. And then the next breakthrough came, generative AI. Once you can learn the language, once you can learn the language of certain information, then with control and guidance from another source of information that we call prompts, we can now guide the AI to generate information of all kinds. We can generate text to text, text to image, but the important thing is this, information transformed to other information is now possible. Text to proteins, text to chemicals, images to 3D, video to video. So many different types of information can now be transformed. 1964, the year after I was born, was a very good year for technology. IBM, of course, launched the System 360, and AT&T demonstrated to the world the first picture phone. Encoded, compressed, streamed over copper telephone wires, and twisted pair, and on the other end, decoded. Picture phone, little tiny screen, black and white. To this day, this very experience is largely the same. Of course, at much, much higher volumes. For all of the reasons we all know well, video calls is now one of the most important things we do. Everybody does it. About 65% of the internet's traffic is now video. And yet, the way it's done is fundamentally still the same. Compress it on the device, stream it, and decompress it on the other end. Nothing changed in 60 years. We treat communications like it goes down a dumb pipe. The question is, what would happen if we applied generative AI to that? Let's take a look. The future of wireless and video communications will be 3D, generated by AI. 
let's take a look at how NVIDIA Maxine 3D, running on the NVIDIA Grace Hopper Super Chip, can enable 3D video conferencing on any device without specialized software or hardware. Starting with a standard 2D camera sensor that's in most cell phones, laptops, and webcams, and tapping into the processing power of Grace Hopper, Maxine 3D converts these 2D videos to 3D using cloud services. This brings a new dimension to video conferencing with Maxine 3D visualization, creating an enhanced sense of depth and presence. You can dynamically adjust the camera to see every angle in motion. Engage with others more directly with enhanced eye contact. And personalize your experience with animated avatars, stylizing them with simple text prompts. With Maxine's language capabilities, your avatar can speak in other languages, even ones you don't know. NVIDIA, NVIDIA Maxine 3D, together with Grace Hopper, bring immersive 3D video conferencing to anyone with a mobile device, revolutionizing the way we connect, communicate, and collaborate. Now let me talk to you about the next phase of AI. Let me give you just a simple example. In the future, you would say to your robot, I would like you to do something, and the robot will understand your words, and it would generate animation. Remember, I said earlier, you can go from text to text. You can go from text to image. You can go from text to music. Why can't you go from text to animation? And so, of course, in the future, robotics will be highly revolutionized by the technology we already have in front of us. However, how does this robot know that the motion that it is generating is grounded in reality? It is grounded in physics. You need a software system that understands the laws of physics. Now, you've actually seen this already with ChatGPT. Whereas AI, NVIDIA AI, would use NVIDIA Omniverse as in a reinforcement learning loop to ground itself, you have seen ChatGPT do this using reinforcement learning human feedback. Using, human feed, using humans' feedback, ChatGPT was able to be developed by grounding it to humans and align it with our principles. Now, I'm going to show you very quickly Omniverse in the cloud. Let's take a look at the Omniverse cloud. So this is you know, just a web browser, and we're looking now into Omniverse Factory Explorer. It's running 10,000 kilometers away in our Santa Clara headquarters, and we're leveraging the power of our data center now to visualize this factory floor. Uh, we're using real factory data from uh, Simmons uh, and uh, Autodesk Revit to take a look. Um, it's a, a cloud application, so we can have multiple users collaborating. Humans interacting with Omniverse. In the future, we'll even have a generative AI, an AI interact with him in Omniverse. We could, of course, imagine in the very beginning there was Jin. That could be a character. That could be one of the users of Omniverse interacting with you, answering questions, helping you. We can also use generative AI to help us create virtual worlds. So for example, this is a, 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 a bottle that's rendered in Omniverse. It could be placed in a whole bunch of different type of environments. It could render beautifully physically. You could place it just by giving it a prompt, by saying, I would like to put this life, th these bottles in a lifestyle photograph style backdrop for, of modern, warm farmhouse bathroom. Change the background. Everything is all integrated and rendered again. Okay, so um, generative AI will come together with Omniverse to assist the creation of virtual worlds. I'm going to show you now how we're going to use Omniverse and AI here in Taiwan. And we're going to use it for manufacturing. Manufacturing, as you know, is one of the largest industries in the world. We're going to use Omniverse to teach an AI. And then we're going to use Metropolis, our AI deployment, edge deployment system, to deploy the AI. Okay, run it. The $45 trillion global manufacturing industry is comprised of 10 million factories operating 24-7. Enterprises are racing to become software-defined to ensure they can produce high-quality products as quickly and cost-efficiently as possible. Let's see how electronics manufacturer Pegatron uses NVIDIA AI and Omniverse to digitalize their factories. In Omniverse, they start by building a digital twin of their factory, unifying disparate 3D and CAD datasets to provide a real-time view of their complex factory data to their planners and suppliers. In the cloud-native digital twin, planners can then optimize layout virtually before deploying changes to the real factory. 
The digital twin is also used as a training ground and data factory for Pegatron's perception AIs. They use NVIDIA Isaac Sim, built on Omniverse, to simulate and optimize their fleet of mobile robots, which help move materials throughout the facility, as well as the pick-and-place robotic arms that assist on production lines. In the fully operational factory, Pegatron deploys Automated Optical Inspection, or AOI points, along their production lines, which reduces cost and increases line throughput. NVIDIA Metropolis enables Pegatron to quickly develop and deploy cloud-native, highly accurate AOI workflows across their production lines. Omniverse Replicator generates synthetic datasets of PCBA defects, which are too complex and costly to capture in the real world, like scratches and missing or misaligned components. Pegatron then combines the synthetic data with NVIDIA pre-trained models, NVIDIA Tau for training, adaptation, and optimization, and NVIDIA DeepStream for real-time inference, resulting in AOI performance that is 99.8% accurate with a four times improvement in throughput. With software-defined factories built on NVIDIA AI and Omniverse, manufacturers can super-accelerate factory bring-up and minimize change orders, continuously optimize operations, maximize production line throughput, all while reducing costs. What you just saw is basically every factory in the future will be digital, of course, first. Every factory will be a robot. Inside the factories, there will be other robots that the factory is orchestrating. We are also going to build robots that move themselves. So far, the robots that you saw are stationary. Now we're going to also have robots that move. Everything that moves in the future will have artificial intelligence and will have robotic capability. We built the entire robotic stack top to bottom, from the chip to the algorithms. We have state-of-the-art perception for multimodality sensors, state-of-the-art mapping, state-of-the-art localization and planning, and a cloud mapping system. Everything has been created. However you would like to use it, you can use pieces of it. It's open available for you, including all the cloud mapping systems. So this is Isaac AMR. It includes a chip called Orin. It goes into a computer, and it goes into the NVIDIA or Nova Orin, which is a reference system, a blueprint for AMRs. This is the most advanced AMR in the world today. There are three industries right now as we speak that is putting enormous investments into the world. Number one, of course, is chip industry. Number two, electric battery industry. Number three, electric vehicle industry. Trillions of dollars will be invested in the next several years. Trillions of dollars will be invested in the next several years. And they would all like to do it better. And they would like to do it in a modern way. For the very first time, we now give them a system, a platform, tools that allows them to do that. I want to thank all of you for your partnership over the years. Thank you.